Alrighty guys, aligning the Intelliscope. Now I have to say, this is probably my favorite part about this telescope. I've used fully manual telescopes, I've used fully automated go-to systems, uh, and I think this is really the perfect balance uh, between kind of the cost, but also having some computerization and the help locating objects. Um, and I'm surprised that Orion are really the only ones making this kind of product because I think it is so good for so many people. But one of the main reasons that it's so good is that the alignment process is so easy. Uh, you don't have to tell it where you are, you don't have to tell it the time, it doesn't even care what hemisphere you're in. It's going to figure out all this stuff. Uh, literally all you have to do is point the thing vertically, point it at one star, point it at some other star, and that's it. We just want to get familiar with this hand controller first. So first thing we're going to do is just turn it on, the power button. Okay, don't worry too much about what it says. All just hit enter for now. Um, what we want to do is see what align stars are an option for us. So this is where either having a bit of knowledge of the night sky or Stellarium or some other um, app that lets you see what's what's above you in the night sky is going to be really really helpful. So it's giving me a list here. So Akinar is on screen now, Vega, Suhail, Spica, and there, there's probably about what, 12 or 15 different stars to choose from. So the thing that you are going to want to do is go through this list. Don't worry about any of the alignment process right now because we're going to have to turn this off and start again is just pick out the two stars. You only need two, so pick out the two stars that are most convenient for you. Bearing in mind you want them fairly separated in the sky, at least say 30 or 40 degrees separated. Not You don't want two stars that are right next to each other. You don't want two stars in the Big Dipper or two stars in the Southern Cross kind of thing. Preferably that are you know decently high above the horizon. Um, so yeah, just go through the list and pick what they're gonna be. So for me, for instance, in the Southern Hemisphere right now. So I might choose Antares, that'd be a good one for me right now. It's almost overhead at the start of the night. Uh, and then Altair would also be a good one actually, which is uh, slightly lower in the Northern sky right now. So those for me would be a two, two good options for this time of year, uh, August here in the Southern Hemisphere. But just get familiar with your sky and, and, and figure out what are gonna be the two best, star, uh, two best stars on any given night. What I want to do is, I actually don't want this to be in focus. I want the um, the draw tube to be either all the way in or all the way out. I normally go all the way out. And that way the star is going to be super out of focus and we're going to get this big, bright white orb. Um, and that is going to make it a lot easier to center the object in the eyepiece. If you're trying to get this little tiny dot in the center of a screen, uh, sort of, of, a, of a view, it's going to be really hard, but if you can get a giant blob somewhere in the middle, it's going to do a much, much better job, and more importantly, it's going to do it much, much quicker. This will also tell you how, how good your collimation is. You should get a nice round, uh, you know, you should get an image of the primary mirror, more or less, uh, if everything's collimated nicely. So now you've picked your two stars. What you want to do is pick the star, that you're first going to align to. It doesn't really matter if I would choose Altair or Antares, I can pick one. Let's just say I pick Antares. Um, I can actually turn this off now, so hold down the power button for a few seconds and then it'll turn off. So let's say I pick Antares. What I actually want to do right now is find Antares. So I'll take my lid off. I'm using my finder scope, I'm centering it. Let's say that I'm making my hand adjustments and I've found Antares, I've got it in the center. So I found Antares, I'm pointing at it, I'm as out of focus as I can be. All right, so this is where you want to start being a little bit quick. So we're going to take our hand controller, we're going to turn it on, power on. Okay, it's going to say press enter, point vertical, it should say point vertical first, anyway. So um, it's pointed vertical, I'm going to hit enter. Thank you, it says. Now I'm going to pick my alignment star and i got to go through the menu as quick as possible. Antares at least starts with an A, so it shouldn't be too hard to find. Antares, okay, perfect. Now I'm going to find it. 
I don't have to move it left and right because I already did that from before. All I have to do is move it back down to where it was, right? So I'm going to find it quickly in the finder scope. Yep, happy with that. Check it in the eyepiece. Get it centered, that big blob. Perfect. Hit enter. All right. Uh, and now we're going to pick the second alignment star. I want Altair, which is right next to it conveniently. So I'm going to quickly go point to the north, wherever that was. I'm going to have to find this as quickly as I possibly can. So. Make sure you know where these stars are ahead of time. Okay, let's say I'm happy with that. Enter, it'll say thank you. And then it flashed on the screen really quickly and went away. It said W minus 6.5. This W number you get is called the warp factor. It's a measure of how accurately you aligned the telescope. The goal here is to get that number between positive one and negative one, and even better yet, positive 0.5 and negative 0.5. So as close to zero as possible. If you get the W value at zero, it means that you are exactly perfectly aligned and every item that you slew to will be directly in the center of the eyepiece. And if you're between 0.5 and minus 0.5, as I said, then the each object that you're looking for should show up somewhere in the eyepiece. Uh, at least with the 25mm eyepiece that comes with the telescope. This is one of the main features that I really love about this telescope is that it actually tells you how good of a job that you did aligning it. A lot of other telescopes will just say alignment successful or unsuccessful uh, and it doesn't really tell you if you've actually done a good job and then when you go and slew to an object you, you, it might be actually nowhere near where you're pointing or it's just not in the eyepiece. With this you get instant feedback uh, as to whether when you go and slew to an object is it going to show up in the eyepiece? There are two factors that are going to help you get that W value as close to zero as possible. Those two are the accuracy, obviously, of your alignment, but equally importantly is the speed with which you do your alignment. So ideally, you do want to get each alignment star in the center of the eyepiece. But being a little bit inaccurate with that is actually not such a big deal. What is a big deal is doing it quickly, as I said. Ideally, you want to be able to do the alignment from turning the, the hand controller on to finished within one minute. And actually, as close to 30 seconds as you can get is even better. Uh, that's because, obviously, the stars move. Uh, during the alignment process, and this process kind of takes a snapshot of, uh, of the stars at any given time. So obviously the longer you take, the more the stars drift away from that snapshot. So doing, uh, being quite quick is gonna be equally as important as doing it accurately. So don't stress too much about little fine adjustments getting the, the star in the center of the eyepiece. Once it's pretty much in the center, just hit enter and move straight on to the next star. But that's pretty much the process. It's really, really quick. Like I said, you don't need to be super accurate. You just want to be as quick as possible. Um, so what we'll do is it's a really nice kind of evening, as you can probably tell. Uh, we've got beautiful clear skies here. So we'll, uh, we'll come back in a couple of hours when it's dark and we'll do it for real and see if we can get it under that 30 seconds and inside that 0.5 range. Yes, it's vertical. Alrighty. Click through to Antares. There's a few possible reasons that your W values might be way out. 
The first possible reason is that you may not be pointing at the star or stars that you think you are. Uh, an example that always gets me is Castor and Pollux in Gemini. They're two very bright stars right next to each other. I uh, often get those confused um, and there's lots of other examples like Mizar and the Big Dipper and you make sure you're looking at the right star and, and lots of other things like that. So just double and triple check that you're pointing at the stars that you think you are. Options two and three are basically that your azimuth or altitude board, encoder boards and discs are maybe not installed correctly. They may be slipping. So when you turn the telescope, the disc may not be rotating at the exact same rate. So uh, I have pretty detailed instructions on how to install those correctly in my uh, previous video. So I will link that uh, above here. So what about if you're seeing consistent errors, uh, usually between 0.5 and 2 or minus 0.5 and minus 2? So this is a really, really common problem and it's to do with the installation of the vertical stop behind the telescope. So that incorporates this thumb screw here and these three washers. When you first install it, the manual suggests to use one large and one small washer. So what I've found is that if you're finding values that are consistently, say between 0.5 and two, they're like two positive, that means you need to add more washers. So maybe add that third washer in or just try two of the big washers, see what helps for you. Um, if conversely you're getting numbers between minus 0.5 and minus two and you, uh, you know, the numbers are too negative, that means you need to take away some washers. So maybe just try the one big one or just the one small one. Uh, you just have to play with that a little bit uh, to see what you get. But if you're getting consistent errors, it's actually a good thing. It's a pretty simple fix. Just play with those washers. Thanks for watching guys. As ever, if you have any questions, please let me know in the comments below and I'll definitely get back to you as soon as I can. And uh, good luck with your new telescope.